Well, a panel about the next 10 years is a panel about everything and, uh, and nothing, uh, I can say. And uh, if we're going to talk about, uh, uh, I'm an economist and I uh, edit a, uh, an economic newspaper and I can tell you from experience that uh, um, predictions do not come true and we can all refer to uh, a well-known uh, saying, by the way, it's not really clear who said that, whether it's Niels Bohr, the, uh, the Danish, uh, the Danish uh, scientist or Yogi Berra is that uh, predictions are really hard especially when they are about the future so um, <coughs> I'd like to call to uh, this uh, this next panel by the way I hope that in 10 years hopefully we'll have air condition in this room maybe if not then 20 years maybe uh, Jonathan Krim please come uh, forward he's the technology editor of the Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones any place you want and pick uh, one of the, Microsoft, the, the microphone from the thing over there. Johan Wilken, Wilkenhage, and I'm sorry if I don't say your name right, from Deutsche Telekom. Jim Cunningham, Senior Director at Infospace. Jimmy Maiman, the CEO of the Huffington Post. And Joram Jacobi, the General Manager, Microsoft Israel R&D Center. So I have uh, I had the, the opportunity uh, to interview um, Ray Kurzweil, the futurist, and he says that uh, in 15 years basically we'll be rid of all illness and we'll live till 150 or something like that, and he's preparing for that by living very uh, healthily and taking uh, additives and doing a little bit of exercise. And in that in 30 years, we'll have little machines, nano-somethings that crawl into our brain, map the brain and the consciousness, and then you can take the whole thing and plug into in the computer and effectively in 30 years achieve immortality. So that's what Ray says. And then you have uh, economists, which I'm uh, more familiar more, uh, with, like uh, uh, Robert Gordon, who said that basically all the big innovations uh, in the world are already... Been, uh, been done. It's already, it's already there. Things like you can only once move from, uh, um, from the countryside to the city. You can only once, uh, uh, by the way, again, only invent uh, air conditioning. You can only once invent the car. Sure, it's only going to be a little bit more sophisticated and maybe may more effective, but basically we're not going to see anything great. And he predicts that because of that, growth will be very small and for uh, middle income people, there's gonna, not going to be any growth at all and all of these uh, problems uh, ahead. Um, I don't know on which of these two sides really uh, we're in right now. What I did see the other day is uh, a research by uh, Gartner. I, I sent you the, uh, the link and uh, we did a little story about this research just this morning. I'm just going to quote a couple of uh, their prediction. They say that uh, the uh, digital revolution will lead to social protest and much more Occupy Wall Street uh, kind of thing. So that's one. They say that the health industry and the fitness industry will uh, push wearable computing. They say that machines will be made such, such that they won't be able to stop. So we'll let them do their own thing without any control on them. They say that some machines and some software and some technology will basically make a lot of profession that maybe some of us work there completely obsolete. Um, okay, sophisticated machine will learn more sophisticated things. That's uh, not surprising. They have a lot to say about 3D printing, which will uh, replace many other kinds of uh, industrial process right now. Uh, they claim that 75% of, uh, of data will not be... Uh, the governments will not be able to safeguard 75% of, of the data so that basically everybody will, be, will have access to private, uh, to private data. And what else is uh, interesting? Okay, that the price and worth of uh, data about people will, will grow and that actually people will start training on that and they will give that away uh, for, uh, for money. So what I suggest for first round, please uh, each one of you just present yourself, say a little something about what you do, and then try to give me your one big bet about what's going to be really, really impressive in the next 10 years. So just start. All right. Is this on? 
Can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, so I'm Jim Cunningham. I'm from InfoSpace. We do uh, web search, private label web search, um, and we have many great partners here in, uh, in Tel Aviv. Um, I think the next 10 years, it's a really uh, tough question in the sense that we shouldn't be thinking about the next 10 months. If you think about the innovation that has happened, whether it's companies coming out of big data, um, you know, I know that's a, a word we all like to use, but I live in Seattle, Washington, and about two blocks from my house are two companies that didn't exist three years ago that are now publicly traded multi-billion dollar companies. And I would, uh, you know, think that a lot of the ideas, um, and I've been in the internet space for about 15 years now, uh, worked with Sabir Bhatia who started Hotmail, and I think it's constantly, like, the innovations, there are great companies that are going to be ahead of us that will happen, if you think of Twitter, 2006. Um, so I think the best is yet to come. I think there'll be a lot more refinements in, in technologies. Um, I think the land grab of, you know, uh, you know, first movers, as they like to call them, but I think that is the power of the internet, is that things can change so rapidly and you can go from a zero to a hero overnight. And so, um, you know, I think kind of more of those general terms uh, are things that we look at is, you know, never underestimate innovation, never underestimate the drive of people. Okay. I'm not sure it worked. Yeah, it actually worked. Well, uh, yes, give it a shot and, and uh, I don't know, maybe try to be more specific. Give us the one thing that you think is going to blow our mind. Yeah. This is Johannes Winkelhager working for Deutsche Telekom. And as a network operator, we are more or less used to think in terms like 10 years or 20 years. So, so it's not that strange for me. Um, I have been uh, a journalist uh, working uh, on, on technology topics like you do um, for 13 years for a big German newspaper. And I changed after uh, I got uh, more or less bored about that and do some real thing working for Deutsche Telekom uh, in the CEO's office and um, working with the CEO on strategic projects and uh, on the strategy for the next 10 or 15 years. And what we see is that, you mentioned it, that uh, our uh, innovation cycles are completely disrupted from software. So we were used to think about 10 or 20 year cycles and now we have to think about in 10 or 20 month cycles and everything is changing quite rapidly. One thing which is lying on the base and which does not change or has not changed yet that much is connectivity. So I would like to uh, talk about connectivity and how this will change in the next years. And I think we're going to see a completely new understanding of connectivity. I would like to have you here in 10 years sitting over there and not even thinking about uh, how I'm connected, not thinking about technology. So, and this will be one of the boosters from our point of view to make all these things, all these startup ideas happen in the next 10 years. And uh, I promise that we will work very hard on that and we're going to invest billions to make it happen. And this is one other thing I would like to talk about. Okay, Jimmy. I'm Jonathan Krem. Does this work? Jonathan Krem with the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I think there's going to be tremendous advance in artificial intelligence in the next 10 years. We're actually in the very early stages of natural language processing. Uh, search is actually fairly unsophisticated and Ray Kurzweil of all people would tell you that and he's, he's the guy at Google that's working on this problem. Uh, I don't think he's right about living to be 150 but I do think he's right about this. I'll mention one other thing that I think is going to be uh, a very big development. It's not a particular product but I think People in the next 10 years are going to begin to recognize and come to grips with uh, what privacy really means and whether they have control of their information or not. And it's going to be very interesting to see whether they choose to actually take control of their information or whether they can no longer do so even if they want to. Jimmy Mayman from Huffington Post. Um, I think uh, talking about artificial intelligence just last week, uh, I w spent time seeing a presentation on artificial intelligence and it was actually, I was blown away to see at this point in time what we are capable of doing and, uh, and they expect within the next four or five years that we can actually start to treat serious illnesses uh, you know, using artificial intelligence, um, uncovering and doing things that we with our human minds are not capable of doing. 
um, they showed quite interesting examples uh, of um, gaming, you know, where uh, the machine was able to pretty fast to outsmart the game, and, and that's the kind of things they wanted to apply to medicine. So I think that's one of the things that's interesting. I think also it's interesting, interesting to talk about where innovation is going to come from, because I think for a long time we've seen the U.S. and in particular the Valley as, as the place for innovation. I think over the next 10 years, Ten years, we're going to see a shift. Uh, you know, we're going to see a shift towards Asia. Is what I believe. I believe. You know, already now what we are seeing coming out of China, India, uh, those kind of places. And 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 since it's going to shift over there, they're much more uh, mobile savvy. They kind of jump the desktop thing. So mobile is obviously uh, going to play a huge role over the next ten years. Uh, you know, everything from uh, much more sophisticated location-based services uh, uh, to the way we use uh, mobiles to pay things uh, as an intelligent device. Right, Joram. I'm Joram. I run the Microsoft R&D Center in Israel, where we hopefully build some of the technologies you will use in the next 10 years. I actually have a prediction first for the Israelis in the, in the crowd. How many Israelis do we have here? Quite a few. So I predict that within the next 10 years, we'll be figure out how to handle daylight savings time in our phone and computers. And if the non-Israelis folks do not understand what I just, why, why I said that, please, the Israelis, explain to them why I said that. Uh, specifically, more seriously, uh, and maybe it's not going to sound very serious when I say it, uh, I'm usually the, the more optimistic part of the bunch when I'm with other people. And I think that within the next 10 years, we will actually be able to tell the future. We'll be able to be future tellers. And, and before you think I'm, uh, I, you know, I watch too much uh, uh, Tolkien or uh, Game of Thrones and stuff like that, I'm going to give you some examples. I mean, we have, we collect tons of data, uh, not just Microsoft or Google or Yahoo. Everyone collects tons of data. Each of you collects tons of data all the time. And the more data we have, the more we can look back at the data, look for pattern matching, look for use data anal uh, analytics and data technologies to deduct how the future is going to look like and to look at the past and deduct from the past to the future. And we can do that more and better with more data. I'm going to give you one example and then we can move on. Uh, one of the things we do, uh, specifically in virus detection in computers, it used to be that when a virus hit your machine, the antivirus software was able to detect the virus, remove it. Usually too late after the virus already made its impact on the machine or stall or whatever it did. Today, using data analytics, using tons amount of data we collect from billion computers around the world, we can actually tell you that the virus is going to hit your machine in the future. We can tell you that within two weeks, a specific virus is going to hit your machine. And then we can actually block it from even getting to the machine because we know what's going to happen in the future. And that's future telling. Maybe it's not, uh, you know, Gandalf or the Lord of Light future telling, but it is future telling, and I believe we'll be able to do more and more of that in the future. Will you be able to tell me which stocks are going to go up? Uh, possibly, or at least, uh, we, I, I don't think we're going to be right 100% of the cases. I think we'll have a better chance than the random selection of stocks by looking at past behavior. I, I have a bet on that. Uh, people that are selling uh, air conditioning in Tel Aviv uh, will definitely yeah. have a future. Yeah. It's very hot here. Yeah, by the way, if you know that you're going to be hit by the, by, by the virus, then you're going to treat it beforehand and you're not going to be hit by the virus. So what does that mean? It becomes very, uh, very uh, strange the, by then if you can predict the future. But I'd like to stay a few more, uh, a few more seconds with, uh, with, with technology. Uh, I'm not a technology person myself. But the cloud, big data, wh where does it end? Wh what does it mean at the end, uh, uh, at the end of the day when, when everything is recorded and everything is, is crunched? Um, wh where does it actually take? The, do you guys in your companies have any, any thinking about uh, uh, future products, about a uh, future system, how they're going to look like? Would anybody want to take that? I can, I can start with it. 
uh, it's a little bit like uh, that what you said, looking in the future. It's a little bit like what we know from the minority report, for example, to, to have a, at least the near future a little bit more closer to us. But what I guess is that if we start combining all the data uh, currently collected in uh, corporate silos, every company has their own data silo. If we start combining these data and building different levels and then start asking the right questions to this huge database. I think it will be a complete new definition of that what we have called recommendation until now. So it's not about not only about telling the future, it's about uh, giving me hints, giving me advices and uh, for example it's a, it's a kind of a sensor system. It's a, um, maybe one of the biggest questions was how to predict earthquakes. Maybe if we can uh, start working with these systems, uh, really able to um, work with these huge data masses, that's your turf, I guess, uh, it becomes quite interesting.